Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is a morning market prep video for September 14th, 2021. Well, yesterday we had kind of a, um, a market that just whipped around. Um, we did have tiny little bit of improvements here and there, but not a whole lot changed. And the reason is, is we're really waiting um, on a CPI number this morning that could change the attitude of the market completely. So what does that mean for this morning? Well, how about we grab ourselves something to drink, let's settle into our office chairs, and let's get ready for the Tuesday edition of the Morning Market Prep video. Good morning once again, everyone. I want to wish you all a fantastic morning. You know, we have um, something going on today that literally could change everything um, an hour before the market opens this morning. There is all eyes around the world are keeping a close eye on this. So let's take a look at our chart, see if we can gain some information, and then we'll take a look at the CPI number um, in just a moment. First off, we do have to recognize that the Dow is still struggling. The Dow, low, lower high, lower low. And as of yesterday, even with that nice little rally back up yesterday, we're still below our 50-day moving average. Now, so far, our 50-day moving average is flattening out just a little bit, but it really hasn't turned to the downside. We'll want to watch that carefully. But I do want to point out the um, shorter term moving averages. I've got this black one here is an eight exponential. The orange is a, a 34 exponential. And then the yellow it dashed is the 20 exponential. And take a look up here, we're kind of creating a zone of resistance. And that zone of resistance comes right in there, right where we would expect to see that resistance. And that is in price as well. We do have other levels of price resistance above that we'll have to deal with if we can start to rally through. But one of the things um, I kind of worry about here with the Dow is that possibility that failing this 50-day moving average this time may be a little bit different than what we've seen in the past. We've got all of these data points showing that our economy is starting to struggle and slow down. And so let's watch that closely. A failure below the 50, a rally back to the 50 creates one of my favorite shorting patterns, and that's one of those that I call the blue ice failure. Yesterday, I tried to pick up a bear call credit spread on um, the diamonds. I didn't get filled on my price, but I'm still watching for that potential here. And it could turn into more than just a credit spread. It could turn into a straight on short position for me if we do get that failure here in the diamond. So watch for that closely. Now there is also that potential that we could get some inspiration here today and we can pop through, but please keep in mind, even popping through that 50 day moving average with this price resistance above, there's still some questions to be answered here and we can pop through and still find a reason to fail so watch that carefully in the chart diamonds a little bit on shaky ground now if we look at our spy however our spy although we have pulled back we've had some selling in the chart it's still very clearly holding an upside trend now, albeit a little bit of volatility starting to show up here and a little bit of concern. Now, yesterday we had pushed through, if you notice right here, at the low um, of the day yesterday, we had actually broken that big ugly candle here on Friday. But by the end of the day, we rallied back up and held on to that with a surge right at the end of the day in um, some buying. So watch that carefully here today. As long as we can hold on to this trend support, we may be in pretty good shape. But we do have this concern in here. We kind of broke a little bit of a support level in the chart. 
So we'll want to watch that closely if that happens to serve as a little bit of resistance. Now we do have other price supports in here trying to hold as well. So keep a close eye on that. We're right at that point and, and unfortunately we have a number this morning that could change things dramatically. We could either find in that CPI report better than expected results and see the market bounce right off of this or we could get that ugly inflationary number NCS break that support. So we're right there on that knife's edge trying to decide which way we want to go. But at this point, I've got to say, looking at this chart, SPY continues in its uptrend. And let's take a look at QQQ. QQQ has been the major driver to hold the SPY up. If it weren't for these big tech stocks, uh, finding buyers, then we would run be running into significant trouble here in the SPY. But big tech is doing a tremendous job of lifting, continuing to attract buyers. But we do have some worries here starting to form as some of those big techs are starting to show some cracks in their uh, charts. Let's take a look right here. There was our uptrend in the SPY or the QQQ. And we've just kind of drifted back below that. Notice that um, we're pushing down here into this little price support level. And unfortunately, when we surge so strongly here in a chart, um, we haven't had the ability to really put in good solid support levels. So keep in mind, this is a relatively weak support level. And if we were to fail that level, look quickly, you know, we could quickly fall right into that support. That's a stronger level and could certainly hold us in that chart. We also want to take a look, and I'm going to draw a trend up here. Now, this trend doesn't have a whole lot of evidence to it. You know, we we're so stretched away there's not a lot of not a lot of touches to that trend line but notice that right in here is where we could catch that little bit of support uh, depending on how we react um, to some of this data today so watch that carefully if those buyers can find reason for inspiration right there but we are also on that knife's edge here this morning where we could, if those bears find a reason to, um, to react or to come out and attack, we could see a break of that trend. And hopefully this support level catches. If it doesn't catch us at the top of that support, we can always hope that it catches us at the bottom of the support. But that would be a pretty dramatic move if we drop down through there. So just watch that closely. And then IWM, the Russell, has been um, held up prim primarily by um, energy sector. Um, the oil sector has been trying to hold, but we, we have a little bit of weakness um, in here that is just a little bit of concern. Now let's take a look. Yesterday we um, broke down through our 50 day moving average, but we rallied back leaving behind a nice little hammer pattern at that 50 day moving average. Now what's required of a hammer pattern is we need a follow through. And we're trying to get that this morning. Can we follow through this morning? if that inflation number comes in hot? That'll be the question. Um, can we follow through and push up or will we end up um, reversing this, this pre-market candle pushing us back down? I think there is a high probability that IWM could sink into that 200-day moving average pretty pretty easily. Let's take a look at the, te uh, the price action technicals here and notice that this is still in a downtrend. We did break above some price support here in the chart, but we're struggling with that right now around that 50 day moving average. So watch that carefully. Anything is possible here, but I, I think there is a pretty good level of price resistance, not only in price, but also our moving averages, creating a little bit of resistance zone in that chart. It could also produce a little bit of a support zone. So um, anything is possible here. Watch that closely. It really, I think it's going to depend on how the market reacts to that CPI number today. Let's take a look at our VIX. Now the VIX kind of gyrated around yesterday 
And with that surge right at the end of the day, the VIX calmed down just a little bit and pulled back. Notice that we ended up closing below that 20 handle, and I've been mentioning that 20 handle for a while. Um, this is a big level right through here in this chart. Notice all the price evidence around that 20 level is either support or resistance in the chart. So watch that closely. Pushing back down below that level yesterday was a little bit of a bullish sign saying that, hey, we're not ready to, to push on through uh, to the upside. But we do wanna notice that these big price spikes up here um, serving that downtrend, we're starting to test that just a little bit. So if we were to get a CPI number that shows inflation is hotter than expected, then we could easily push on through that level if that number comes in better than expected that would be a good sign for the market and we might be able to press down um, and, and drop that emotion back down in here but we still have to be a little bit concerned of these rising lows in here so watch that carefully in the vix you know today is one of those days where everything i everything we talk about here could change very dramatically based on how that number comes in so just really stay focused and um be ready for just about anything today let's take a look at our uh, T2122. It's the four week new high, new low ratio. And notice that yesterday, while we did rally in the market, we didn't see a massive improvement here in T2122. But it was a nice comeback. The Dow had the biggest move yesterday, obviously. And unfortunately, a lot of those stocks were just pushing back up into downtrends. They Not a lot of really good charts out there in the Dow. But watch this closely. Now, T2122 doesn't tell us which way the market's going to go. It just tells us where those pressure points are. Now, we haven't made it down here into the bearish reversal zone on that sell-off. So we're kind of mid-range here. The market's trying to hedge its bet here, trying to decide if we get that inspiration uh, for the bulls here on that CPI number, we certainly have opened an upside um, opportunity here in the chart. At the same time, if those bears are inspired from that CPI number, we certainly have an open opening to move lower. So kind of keep that in mind. T2122 is not really telling us which way we could go. And it's it's almost as if the market's just straddling the fence here, trying to figure out what comes next um, on that move. Let's take a look at T2107. Now we did have a little improvement in the number of stocks above its 200 day moving average. Notice we ended up closing the day 45% of the stocks are above their 200 day moving average. Now that still is problematic for me. Um, we're, we have an awful lot of stocks that are very, very bearish. And you can see this downtrend is, is not working out for us here. We tried to recover that and then failed right in this area here. But we did improve just slightly. Remember that we did make a new low here on this. So um, rallying back up toward this resistance area in that downtrend just says that we could continue to fail. So watch that carefully here. Um, we still have a lot of weakness in the market. And then if we take a look at T2101, market breadth was a little bit on the weak side yesterday. It, 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 as we rallied up at the end of the day, it improved. And, and I mean the last 10 minutes of the day, it improved. But it really didn't give us um, that big warm and fuzzy to the buy side that there was a lot of follow through, that there was a lot of energy in that buying. So keep a close eye on that. T2101 absolute market breadth continues to be a little bit of a concern. And mostly because this big downtrend, we can't seem to uh to get through uh, that downtrend now one of the things we don't want to see is we don't want to see this really spike up on a sell wave if the market were to if the bears were to come in strongly on this cpi number and spike up that could be a real concern if we see rising breadth on a selling wave so watch that closely let's take a look at our earnings calendar today now 
our, well, excuse me, our economic calendar. Um, as I've been mentioning all morning, um, this CPI number is going to be a big deal and could certainly, and, and as a matter of fact, the entire world is kind of keeping their eyes on this this morning um, closely. CPI is expected, according to economists, to come in hot at 5.4% year over year in August. Now, if it comes in at that, at that level, we may say, oh, we hit estimates and the market kind of shrugs and goes, well, maybe we can get past that. If it comes in hotter than that, that could be a problem for the market. We could see selling um, come into play if it comes in hotter than that. And if it comes in better than expectations, meaning that inflation is not as hot as they were originally expecting, it's still hot, but not as, as hot as expected, that could have bullish implications for the market. So keep in mind, everything could change here at 8.30 a.m., an hour before the market opens, we could see an awful lot of gyrations in the market that could change the picture very very much before we open. So watch that closely here this morning. Now, unfortunately, that's not the only stumbling block that we have this week to get through. Notice we're going to have retail sales over here. Retail sales, and we know jobless claims have been a little bit problematic for us recently, but retail sales coming um, on Thursday, that is another potential stumbling block that's going to give us some kind of clue about how strong the consumer is. And then we have the consumer sentiment reading on Friday. Now that came in at a huge miss last time, uh, pushing down to 2011 lows. So consumer sentiment um, could suggest a little bit of a problem as well. Um, so we still have some more stumbling blocks this week to get through. I wish it, we didn't have so many nail biters this week, but that's, that's the market we're in. So watch this closely. Now, having said all of that, guys, the one thing I want to point out here is the market is showing signs that the path forward is starting to become a little bit uncertain. And that is when we see these internal numbers of the market. We, we saw last Friday, the Atlanta Fed came out with a revision to the GDP. They revised it down 41% to 3.7% um, for this third quarter. So please keep in mind that there is this uncertainty out there and don't become complacent thinking that the buy the dip rally is going to be the place to be right now. It may not be. So don't become complacent. Watch very, very carefully today. Anything is possible. Let's take a look at our earnings calendar. Now our earnings calendar is very light. I'm gonna be really quick on this today. Um, our earnings calendar is very light. I did list three companies on that are potentially notable, but they are small cap little companies, not exactly something that's going to move the market um, around. So if you, well, there's only 14 companies listed uh, you know anyway so not a big not a big focus on earnings so if you want to catch those um, notables please click the link just below the title of the video that'll take you back to the morning blog and you can take a look at those how about we take a look at some stocks that could be setting up but before we do that guys if this is the first time that you have seen these videos if you could please click that subscribe button on YouTube click that bell when it pops up so you'll be notified when I post a video Click those thumbs up buttons if you believe the video was worthy and, and um, helpful to you as you plan your day. And also leave that brief comment. And I, w I just want to thank everyone so much. The channel continues to grow. We've all of a sudden hit just kind of a slowing of the channel growing here. But every time you guys leave those comments, click those thumbs up buttons, it helps that algorithm show these videos to more folks. And I just want to say thank you so much to everyone who does take the time to do that. I truly, truly appreciate it. 
uh, means the world to me. You guys are awesome. And also, thank you so much to everyone who continues to support the channel through the Buy Me a Coffee link that's also below the title of the video. You guys are truly awesome. Thank you so much. Um, there will be some changes coming um, where there'll be some more of uh, live camera time and things like that coming as a result. Thank you, everyone. Let's take a look at some stock setting up now please keep in mind guys that these are not recommendations to buy or sell any security and because i'm running short on time i'm gonna have to be really really quick here let's take a look at some stocks that were showing some improvement yesterday even as the market was a little bit funky now unfortunately guys a lot of those happen to be in um, consumer defensive areas, we saw a spike up in some stocks. Now, Coke is not one of those. Coke is actually setting up as a potential short. Notice that we've fallen below our 50-day moving average, but we have this really odd little um, uh, pattern here in the chart, this wedging pattern. Um, notice our 50-day moving average is still rising. So kind of an interesting thing here i think we need to keep an eye on this if coke fails underneath underneath this support i think it could be a, a relatively quick trip down to this next support level if you're looking for a short at the same time i'd be watching this carefully to see if we pop on through to the upside and the reason i say that is when we look at other stocks in in this area take a look at pepsico PepsiCo holding up in this consolidating area right in here. Um, we're seeing defensive sector stocks perking up and they're perking up in lots of places. So watch that closely if these defensive sector stocks can really start moving along. And defensive sector stocks, I had a question. If you look right here, it says it right on the chart, defensive sector. Defensive sector stocks are those products and services and things that we are going to need even if the market runs into trouble. So we're going to need our groceries. We're going to need our consumer staples. We're going to need the things that Procter & Gamble sells us. And look at Procter & Gamble, consumer defensive, trying to push through to the upside, um, trying to break out. We're going to need our utilities. Take a look at XLU. Now, XLU struggled a little bit yesterday, but there were stocks in the XLU sector that did quite well and were moving up. So we're going to to continue to need um, those things. We're going to continue to need healthcare. So take a look at the stocks in XLV. Healthcare has been pulling back here recently, but there are some stocks that are showing some of those upside moves. We had this big um, ugly candle here on Friday, but notice the recovery yesterday here in that. Take a look at MCK. This is a nice bullish pattern with a nice trend, a nice hold of support. Bulls stepping in there on MCK. So watch some of those closely. Those are the places where we might find a little bit of help and support if the market does begin to falter. And I'm not suggesting that it will, just that when we start seeing a rotation like this institutions have to be buying these to um, start showing these trends and that is um, that is a clue that they're rotating out of some of the growth sector stocks and maybe into some of the safety plays here in the market to hold on to some of that dividend yield in the market so just watch that closely those are starting to perk up and move to the upside. You might also take a look at TXN. Uh, Texas Instruments, some of the semiconductors are looking pretty good here. Texas Instrument rallied the last couple of days here. Notice we're up here testing a resistance level in the chart. Any push through this area that holds or we could consolidate right in this area and then push on through. Could be interesting. Now we know we have a semiconductor problem in the United States, so keep a close eye on those. Some of those semi holders, semi makers are looking pretty good. Take a look at NVIDIA um, as an example. NVIDIA is holding up here um, above a um, 
a nice little resting point here in this chart. Nice little upside channel. And as this consolidates, this just gets better and better for that possible move if we can find that bullish inspiration to pop on through to the upside. You might also want to take a look at uh, Qualcomm in that area. Qualcomm has had a little bit of trouble here running in this downtrending move, but watch this right in here. If we can hold this support, we might be able to pop on through here to the upside. And you know, everywhere you look in these semiconductors, um, on semiconductors, there's this um, there's this bullishness that is starting to show up. So on semiconductors, notice that big breakthrough, that resistance breakout here in the chart, and that possibility any resting pullback in here sets up more upside opportunity here. So there are some good stocks out there to be paying attention to, places that you can go uh, for the market. Now really, really quickly, if you're concerned about the overall market and think the overall market could fail, don't forget inverse ETFs. Take a look at like RWM. Now RWM is not a leveraged ETF, but this is a inverse to IWM. Notice we've had that nice surge here lately. We're pushing up into that 50 day moving average again. So watch that closely. Um, inverse ETFs can be a great way to hedge yourself in the market in case we do get that slip and go south. So watch some of these closely as they try to improve and try to pick up. Um, you know, if you don't mind leverage, you can look at TZA. TZA is a triple leverage product on IWM. We also have, take a look at DOG. DOG is an inverse, a direct inverse, not a leveraged inverse, direct inverse of the Dow. Notice how we pop through that 50 and we're trying to hold that area as support. If that gets those bulls coming in or those bears coming in on the Dow, the dog might show a rally to the upside and a possible rounded bottom breakout here could be setting up where we push through, hold, and then that rally up toward that 200 day. So watch that closely in case we happen to slip. Hey, I want to wish you guys all a fantastic day in your trading. I know days like today are frustrating. Doggone it. I hurry up and wait and hurry up and wait. And I get it. But I want to wish you all great success in your trading. And although you may be a little bit frustrated, I want to let you all know that you're not alone. Um, as traders, oftentimes we feel like we're very alone in the market, that there is all of this um, um, uncertainty that we feel personally, but please understand you're not alone. And uh, there is a lot of that going around right now with some concern. So, I want to wish you great success. I want to wish you great results in your trading today. Be safe, guys. We'll see you right back here bright and early tomorrow morning. And remember, everything can change at 8.30 Eastern today. So watch that very, very closely. Have a great one. And we'll talk to you all bright and early, bright and early Wednesday morning. Have a good one.